Well, hello folks. Well, here's what this is about, this video. I apologize in advance for the length. I mean, I haven't done it yet, but I know it's going to be long because there are lots and lots of steps involved to make this bowl. It took me quite a while, but I believe it's worth it. If, I think it's one of the prettiest bowls I've ever done. A little different than, than my usual bowl, but somewhat the same. So, hang in there because you know it might be long, but if if you blink too long, you're going to miss one of my one of my tricks or one of my steps. So, uh, watch it all, please, and give me a like, subscribe, and all that kind of stuff if you see fit. What I've got here is a pin hickory. I just Picked it up off the ground and cut a little bit off to get it sort of squared. It wasn't, you know, it had an angle on one side, so um, that's what I did. My next step, because I got to get the mud off it. It's been sitting like that since, uh, I'm going to say last fall sometime, on the ground, which means it's super wet. And that's what I want for this project. I want a really wet piece of wood. And the, uh, the project will be a little different, and I'm not even sure it's going to work out, but uh, what I've got here in this old coffee can is dried hickory nuts, and I've got a ton more of them out here. I don't even ever remember picking them up, but what I've got to do somehow Either drill two holes or use that little bitty bandsaw and cut me a slice in these because you know they're uh, they're hollow inside and I'm going to put them in epoxy. So if I don't have some way for the epoxy to get in there, when I start turning, I'll have big old voids. So I've got to try to do that. And this is muddy. And this I'm going to uh, take the bark off and put it on, put a face plate on it and put it on the weight and turn it down to fit in here. And this will be my plug. But now I'm going to take and cut some grooves in it and glue, glue, my, glue my nuts in like, you know, in different places. Um, well, wait a minute, I'm going to cut the groove, but I'm not going to glue my nuts in. I'm going to cut the glue, <laughs> grooves, and then I'm going to put it in the dehydrator. As hot as it'll go, maybe not as hot as it'll go, because I don't know how hot it'll go, but I'm going to put it in at a pretty hot temperature for lots of hours, at least, you know, at least overnight, because I want it to crack. Three. Yeah. Pull that way a little bit. Okay. All right, I got it on here. Uh, I put on I put on my leather welding jacket, as you can see. Uh, just in case some of that bark flies off the leather, to provide a little bit more protection. Uh, the bark was on there pretty good, but I fully expect it to fly off. So I'm not going to turn real fast to begin with, just to try to get that bark off. And I'll sort of stand back over here a little bit more. And <clears throat> I'm about as covered up as I can be. So it don't get done by itself, does it? I've already spun it up. It, it's out of balance. This big old lace is almost, I think, somewhere between 800 and 900 pounds. Plus, it's bolted to the concrete, so. That is about 600.
26 right there. 32. So you get back down in there. It's just a lot more. 49. Thirty-two. I'd say it's wet though. Well, I guess I'm there. Just straighten it up and it'll be good. And I think I'm going to have to cut her down a little bit more. try to use this thing. I don't like using this thing. All right, I got them all cut out. Wasn't really no fun. I may not do that again for a while. Anyway, <clears throat> this is how the walnuts are going to lay in there. I've got to figure out. I got to put either drill two holes in each one, you know, for uh, you know air to get out and resin to push in, which might be the easiest way. I ain't real sure. It might be easiest just to. You know, put them under a drill press and with a pair of pliers and go bzz, bzz. That'd probably be the easiest way using a uh, brad point. Just one hole on each side. Uh, here's what I decided to do. Just got me a pair of pliers. And a little brad point right there. Well, good morning. Well, here's the unveiling. It's been in my dehydrator for 16 and a half hours at 265 degrees. And, uh, should have waited, but look here, it's a lot lighter. Beautiful cracks. That's what I wanted. I wanted all those cracks. I'm gonna put the face plate, plate back on. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a piece of wax paper under. And of course, you, you know that's just to keep the face plate clean down here. But what I'll do is I'm gonna bring it up here like this and tape it real good when I put it in the vacuum chamber. 
because I plan on filling my vacuum, my vacuum, my epoxy up to here because I know I'm going to lose a lot. All these cracks plus all those uh, holes. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish putting this back on. It shouldn't be much of a problem. I'd probably overkill on the screws, but that's all right. Okay, I'm ready to take this off, which is one thing I thought about that you do not want to forget. You need to coat your inside or whatever you're going to use for a mold with a mold release. And I use silicone spray, and I just soak me a paper towel down with it, and I wipe it in here real good all over the place. I have found over the years that this works as good or better than anything you can buy that's called mold release. All right, I'm all set up in here. Things are a little different this time. I decided to use this roll around table and bring it underneath this bright light and do everything right here. I've got a brand, brand new vacuum pot which I never used, and I've had it about six months. But anyway, I'm going to use it with this because I think it's probably needed. So I am going to be putting uh, orange dye into my epoxy. The epoxy I will be using is Total Boat Thick Set. It's a three to one mixture or deep pores. And it sets up in a couple days. <laughs> takes a long time to set up, trust me. So we're going to a three to one right here. Nope, I have it out. Oh, Betsy. There's that. And this be the hardener. We'll see what it does. And I'm going to put just a little bit of copper in it. And then we're going to stir it up. I ought to be using my drill, shouldn't I? You know, it's too late. I'll do it on the next one. So anyway, there we go. They were playing a little different, and I don't know if it'll work or not. But I'm going to pour this about half full and then put it under vacuum and try to get some of them bubbles out of that half. And, and then when I think it's you know mostly done, I'm going to pour the other half and do the vacuum again, nice and slow, because I got hours before this sits up and pour it. See what this thing does. Also took and I coated the whole inside of this with silicone, just in case. pressure pot this morning and surprising it's surprisingly hard it must be the weather I already poked 
and cut it loose. All I did was take a screwdriver and make the place right there and uh, get about two or three puffs of air. There it is. That's the first time it's been out now. See? See what the silicone does? Look at that. Yep. I don't see nothing. That looks bad. You know what? Look here, I can fingerprint it, so you just got to sit here another day. We don't know what we're going to have until we start turning. We don't know if these walnuts are going to have uh, pockets of air in them or not. I really probably should have just busted them all in half. But I just sort of want to experiment. I don't see this being a very pretty bowl, but you never know. Anyway, there you are. I'm going to be using a uh, 15 millimeter round cutter. I put a brand new one on there, and then when I work on the bottom and the top, I'll be using uh, a square cutter with a two inch radius. And that's the two tools I'm going to use. I'm not going to try to use any gouges or anything yet. I might when I get down past this and get into the wood. It just depends. This, this whole thing's always like played by ear. I'm not sure this is going to turn out anyway. I'm not so sure it's going to be much of a pretty bowl. I may call it a yuck bowl. I don't know. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's hold it up and see if we can't do something here. like this is not hard. It is though. Yeah, it's chipping out a little bit. I'm going to get if I go and get it going faster here. That's not fast enough. Now if I had a negative rake it might be, but I'm using this one it's not. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, change the belt. Pretty, didn't they? Look at that wood. My gosh, is that pretty? Look. Never sunk it. And my nuts, had, my nuts got full of uh, epoxy. Wow, that is so pretty.
I tell you, this is going to be one beautiful bowl. I had no idea to do that, but it, uh, it sucked in um, the epoxy and all that right there. But in the nuts themselves, there's a couple little voids. See, that's, that's epoxy right there. Now, that's false. But that's epoxy. See the difference in the color? So I'm going to come right here and put a little bit of this brown in it. This is a Star Bond. Medium thick brown. I said, I'm going to do my favorite thing here. If you guys get uh, tired of me doing bowls like this, just let me know. I enjoy doing it this way. So I've already got my bottom cut. It'll go right here. Okay, and then here's my ring. And it'll go there, and that'll be the makeup of it. It's going to be a tall bow, but that's all right. We like tall bowls. So now what I'm doing, there you go. It's got some pretty grain in it. And I, I, I deliberately picked this because I wanted that uh, sapwood lightness right here, you know, to sort of go with that other. Same thing on this right here. So anyway, I'm getting ready to drill my cheat hole and start on the bottom. So let's, get, let's do that. One thousand and two. Good morning. Well, it ought to be good and sit up. It's been two days. Uh, I've got the, my big hangar doors open, so you hear wind in the background. Don't pay attention to it. It's just working up to another front coming through. This time of the year is just one after another. So anyway, the plan is to clean this up and make a little design there for my base, and then square the bottom and and. I'm going to put a tin in and a base in it. That's the plan, man. Let's get up.
seems like it's wobbling more. And it was. I guess it's all right. It seemed like it was wobbling more. I, just, I didn't like that. Okay. See there, don't that looks like it's wobbling more. I want to show you this setup real fast. Uh, this small cold draws here. See, I just put it in there like that. And then what I've got is uh, got an adapter. And this will go in the tailstock. Of course, it's not for spinning. It's just for aligning when I glue it together. picked up a bad battery. There you go. That's how it works right there. thing with a tail stock in there so I'm just going to have to grin and bear it. We'll see what happens here. If it flies off, it flies off. I sure hope not though. So I'm going to try for a little while anyway a 5H bowl gouge. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna try around 800. A lot of, a lot of wobbling going on here. Finish do the outside first. Get rid of that as much wobble as I can. Catch with it. Back to where it started, uh, I just ended up putting a face plate on it, on it back there. Uh, I plan on you know, putting an epoxy bottom in it anyway. 
I had planned that all along, so that's not a change of plans. Well, you may wonder what I'm doing now. I am going to cut me a groove right here and pour the epoxy in it. Just got done pouring this when it dawned on me that I wasn't videoing, so I went, I went and got the camera. At least I can show you the end results. I'm sure you've seen people mix resin before. Anyway, I put, put um, this is Total Boat Orange right here, and this is, it doesn't have a label on it, but it looks like it's maybe a gold, and I put those two in the orange, and uh, there it is, what you see. It poured it in the bottom and cut that there. And once this is done, I'll I'll put it back on the lathe and and get this everything like I wanted and polish, and then I'll flip it over and I'm gonna pour more orange in the bottom. Hey, you can sort of see where I'm at. I've got where I don't even bother video and the, the sanding or like putting sealer and stuff on because you know everybody's seen that a million times and it's it's extremely boring uh just you know it's a waste of my my time to video it and your time to watch it so that's why i don't do it so i have got to the point that as you can see i've got two two poke <laughs> when i learn to talk i'm gonna like it I got two coats of poly on it now. Got a couple little rough spots here. I'm gonna try to get out real fast before. I don't wanna do too much because I don't wanna rub my poly off. Okay, Okay. I'm gonna hit this real lightly with 400 and then some four out steel wool. And then we're gonna get onto the ax paste. And the reason I like to video of this is for a couple of reasons. I, you know, ax is, is one of my sponsors. And I, I, this is a part I enjoy because, you know, everything you've done seems to come to fruition right here. I mean, all the shine pokes up and, the, you know, you begin to really see what you've done. So let's see what we got here. I usually do this at a pretty high speed. It doesn't take long. What do you think? I think it's beautiful. I'll get it off of there and get that face plate off and go fill the bottom in with orange epoxy. I've already tested it and I'm going to laser that with my logo and we'll be done. Well, I finally wrapped this. Actually, I wrapped it about, about a week ago, but it just took this long to get to uh, around the editing the video. And editing videos, this video is taking me a full day. Uh, I'm not as fast as some people. And I want to apologize again, you know, for having to cut out so much of it because there's a, there's a few things in there I'd really like to show you, but I, I can't do two-part videos. I don't like to watch them, so I don't show them. I don't make them. I guess I could. This one's running up in the past, way past the 30-minute mark. I usually try to keep them at 30, but I did want to show you. Mm -hmm which I didn't do on the video, uh, the bottom of this is an extra step in here. I poured the orange in here and I went to the laser and cut that. Of course, you, uh, you, you couldn't hardly see it. So what I did then was cut a groove around here. Where'd it go? There it is. Sorry, I lost you a second. Cut a groove right around here and poured some black in it. And then took my finger with some black and smeared it all around. And then, of course, then wiped it off so, you know, it all showed up in. Plus, I like that ring around it. Looks good, but it's another step. I really haven't counted the steps in this, but it was a lot of them. One thing I really like to show, and I doubt I can show you here, 
Maybe I, maybe I can, but right above my finger. Can you see that right above my finger? There's a full-blown face in there. <laughs> sort of neat looking, huh? So anyway, I, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. I do wish I could have showed a lot more of it. But I can't. All right. Take care. Looks like I got a text message. I'll catch you later.